I'm standing here under one of Austin's famous moon towers. These were put in in the end of the 19th century to recreate moonlight for this growing city. There's a new fiesta in the making as we speak. It's out at the moon town. The moon's the brightest thing in the night sky, but very few people have an idea of just how far away it is. Now Derek from Veritasium did an awesome video about this, so you should go check that out. Well, the moon's 385,000 kilometers away. I mean, that's really far. Distances are a funny thing. You can probably picture the distance from your house to the corner or maybe your hometown to where your grandma lives, but the human brain just can't fathom how big things like the solar system are, how far apart and tiny everything is. The universe is big, it's fast and complicated and ridiculous. So how big is the solar system? Let's make this grapefruit our sun. It's kind of orangey and round like our sun is. It's 110 millimeters in diameter compared to the 1.4 million kilometer diameter of the sun. We'll put it here at the center of our solar system. And here we are at our first planet, Mercury. Now, one thing to note about the orbits of the planets is they're not circles, they're ellipses. And that means sometimes the planets are a little bit closer and sometimes they're a little bit farther. So here we are at four and a half meters or about 15 feet away from our grapefruit sun back there. At this scale, Mercury is only the width of four human hairs, just a tiny dot that you can barely see on here. At 59 million kilometers away from the sun, it's really hot right here. It's hot enough to burn away nearly all of Mercury's atmosphere. And here we come to Venus. We're about eight and a half meters away from our grapefruit sun, which is 108 million kilometers. At this scale, Venus is just under one millimeter wide, and that's about the same as 10 sheets of paper stacked together. Next, we come to Earth. This one millimeter blue dot, that's here, that's home, that's us, as Carl Sagan used to say. Now we're about 11.6 meters from our grapefruit sun, which is the same as 150 million kilometers. It takes light about eight and a half minutes to get to this point. We call that one astronomical unit. Now there's something very special about this zone. Because of this particular distance from the sun and the geologic and atmospheric qualities of Earth, this habitable zone is what makes life possible here on our planet. Next up we come to the red planet Mars. We're about 18 meters out now, which is the same as 229 million kilometers. At this scale, Mars is a tiny half millimeter red dot. That's about the same size as a human egg cell. Next up we come to the asteroid belt. Now, this stretches from 23 to 46 meters out from our solar system grapefruit center over there. Movies get the asteroid belt all wrong. If you clumped it all together, it would only be about 4% the mass of our moon. That means it's the same as a grain of salt crushed up and distributed around this entire orbit. Here we are at Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. It's 143,000 kilometers in diameter, but on our scale, it's just bigger than a centimeter. We're about 61 meters out here, the same as 779 million kilometers. Here we are at Saturn, my favorite planet. And we're about 112 meters out from where we started, which is the equivalent of 1.4 billion kilometers. I and mean, you can barely see Jupiter from here. Now at this scale, Saturn is only about the height of a Lego brick. Now we come to the first of the ice giants, Uranus. Now we are really far away. We're 226 meters from where we started, which is the same as 2.9 billion kilometers from the sun. That's over twice as far as we just were at Saturn. Now out here, Uranus is only 3.7 millimeters wide and temperatures are so cold that they can reach down to minus 224 degrees centigrade. Here we are at Neptune, the outer ice giant. Now we're more than 350 meters from where we started. That's four and a half billion kilometers. Out here, I can't see the sun. I can barely see Uranus. And that's actually how Neptune was discovered. We couldn't see it. It looked like another star in the sky. And if it hadn't been for its gravitational effect on its neighboring planet, we never would have found it. It orbits so slowly out here that it's only circled the sun once since we discovered it in 1846. Well, I guess that's all the planets, but we can't forget about this guy, Pluto. Now, we all know that Pluto's not officially a planet anymore, 
And there's some good reasons for that. We just entered a region of the solar system called the Kuiper Belt. Now these are frozen remnants of the early solar system. Icy rocks that have come together, frozen methane and ammonia. Pluto's so small that out here it would be the width of a single dollar bill. And instead of being flat in its orbit like the rest of the planets, it's kind of tilted up on an angle. And it's so elliptical that for 20 out of its 250 year orbit, it's closer to the sun than Neptune is. But I know how strongly you guys feel about Pluto and while we can't call it a planet, we'll go ahead and put it out here. If you'd like to play with your own solar system model, I put some links down in the description so you can do your own calculations and make your own. I'd love to see them, so email me, send them to me on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, all those links are down below too. Now hopefully this gives you an idea of just how big the solar system really is. That might make some of you feel kind of small, but it shouldn't because we're the ones that are able to figure all of this out and explore to the farthest reaches of the solar system and maybe one day beyond. And that makes me feel pretty tall. One more thing, Voyager. Voyager was launched in 1977, a craft the size of a car shot out to the outer reaches of the solar system. Right now it's almost 18 and a half billion kilometers from the sun. That's it. This is the edge. It's the equivalent of standing 1.4 kilometers from our grapefruit, and it's the farthest man-made object from Earth. Remember, we may just be floating around on a speck of dust back there somewhere, but Voyager proves that we're capable of building some pretty amazing things.